Hi, I'm Marcy. I'm Soraya. And I'm Micah. And today we're discussing why we think that China will not become the next great superpower. Due to urbanization and industrialization, rural Chinese have been migrating to the cities for jobs and higher wages. While they make up over one-tenth of the population, they don't receive the same benefits as those who live in the cities. There are many disadvantages for these migrant workers, such as low wages and discrimination. These workers are typically young, healthy, and uneducated. They have also been hit particularly hard by the global financial crisis that led to a drop in demand for Chinese goods, leading to unemployment and layoffs. The Hukou system is the house registry system that allows for social services, which are dependent upon where someone is registered to live. Because the migrant workers leave their homes, they are unable to receive the associated benefits. The difficulties and discriminations against migrant workers and the unemployment, as well as the disadvantages with the Hukou system, have led to a spike in unrest, and the workers may become disenchanted with the government. China's government is corrupt. The legal system is mostly controlled by the local government of the people. Jerome Cahen, a respected Western specialist in Chinese law, says, Legislation is frequently inadequate and many conflicts between national and local norms and the proliferation of regulations, interpretations, and edicts often produce incoherent and inconsistency. This tells of how their government is unstable. With the problems that they have, their government varies on decisions that isn't uniform. Judges are strained by the ties in society, such as with their families and friends. This will sway their decision, making it an unfair trial. People don't have the legal or human rights that they should, such as the right to lawyer, freedom of speech, and the right to bear multiple children. This affects China to not become the next great superpower because from past history, you can see that the corruption in the government has negatively affected them. This can easily happen again. Another problem in China is pollution. There have been an increasing number of deaths and medical issues because of pollution. This is an, there is an estimation between 450,000 and 750,000 deaths annually. China is known as the world's most worrisome case of environmental degradation. China is the biggest emitter of greenhouse gases, taking lead over the United States. This air pollution causes some cities to encourage their citizens to wear masks whenever they go out. It is also very difficult to see and has a very high PM problem. Water pollution is also a big issue. Shortage of water degrades the quality of available water, threatens their food security, and drops the quality of life. Acid rain comes from a combination of chemical and waste dumping. This contaminates the soils and affects their crops, making it very difficult to grow safe food. From our book Contemporary China, Michael Dillon says that the pollution is spreading more towards the rural areas. This affects China not becoming the next great superpower because farmers won't be able to produce safe food, causing China to reach to other parts of the world for help that will cause that will cause their economy to go down. To help control population growth, the Chinese government instituted the one-child policy. However, due to a tradition where the young men of the family took care of the parents, there was a strong preference for boys, and this led to many females being disposed of in one way or another, leading to a gender inequality. In 2011, there were 600 million females to 700 million males. This inequality means that the females have their choice of marriage partners, and they will choose the rich young men because the young people of China are very materialistic. This leaves several young men without marriage partners, who could be used to supply the army, but in these days, sheer force is not the most effective means of warfare. Lastly, because of the one-child policy, the Chinese are not replacing their population, which is steadily becoming older. If the young men go to war and families continue to have only one child, China will become a nation of elderly and very young, a great financial burden on the middle age. The gender inequality will also rise, leading to fewer and fewer marriage prospects within China, possibly leading to Chinese young men finding partners outside of China. China is dependent of other countries. They are exporting more things than importing. They are keeping things from getting too expensive for Americans, so they will continue to need their goods enough to buy them. If the Chinese yuan were different, then it would be cheaper for Americans to trade within itself, which would hinder the Chinese economy, so they would have to be careful to keep a good balance. If China loses the trade with America, their economy would topple and it wouldn't have a foundation to stand on. China lacks a raw raw resources it needs, so it bombards other countries and acquires what they need from countries such as Africa. From Africa, they use uranium resource extractions from oil, industrial minerals, timber, cotton, fisheries, steel, and more. They use this opportunity to open new jobs in other countries that would help stimulate their own economy instead of the country they are in. This affects China to not become the next superpower because China's economy would suffer majorly if their relationships go bad. 
The next problem is education. In the rural, ed- rural Chinese areas, there are some teachers. These teachers aren't very certified to teach and act more like babysitters. The students eventually get to a certain age where education isn't more important than working in the field. And in order to get a higher education, you have to pay a lot of money. From an article from our Digging Deeper Topics, it says the financial hurdles to attaining higher education are the highest in the world. This price doesn't include any sort of living cost. In urban Chinese, in urban areas, the ch- children have good opportunities for a decent education, but it is very difficult to obtain one. From our book, Contemporary China, came this quote. The examinations that are taken are extremely difficult, it's extremely competitive, and take up a big portion of their lives. From the same article in our Digging Deeper Topics came this quote. Basically, with the high cost of education, China will not be able to keep up with their labor force because of the skill levels. This lack of education educational workers will have a big impact on their economy. So why should we care? We are a globalized economy, so what happens to China affects us as U.S. citizens. The Chinese people aren't as different as they seem from a Western standpoint. From the points that we have covered, we have come to the conclusion that China will not become the next great superpower.